Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to the Periscope. And welcome to uh, Nano Plan Mo, which is National Novel Planning Month. Um, I am Jennifer Blanchard. I'm an author and a story coach. I work with serious emerging novelists who want to save time and cut years off their learning curves so that they can write really kick-ass stories and get published faster. So as you probably know, or maybe you don't, um, November is National Novel Writing Month. And so in the month of November, the goal is to write a 50,000 word novel in 30 days. And the problem with Nano is that, or in my opinion, is that while it's great for motivation and for just getting you in the habit of writing, it doesn't necessarily get you an actual story or especially a novel by the end. And the reason is because it takes a lot to put a novel together. And if you just sit down and start writing on November 1st, you're not going to have everything you need to make it happen. So to help you make that happen, to help you get somewhere better by the end of next month, um, I'm doing National Novel Planning Month this month. And so every day during the week, I'm giving you lots of story planning tips um, to help you make sure that you know everything about your story or as much as you can before you write it November 1st. So um, yesterday I talked about concept and explained kind of what a concept is and why you need one in your story. So just a quick recap, um, a concept is basically a landscape or a setting, um, it's a notion, it's, it's a, something that brings that um, gotta read it factor to your story, that makes it really interesting before you've introduced a plot or a character. And um, the most important thing to know is that, um, hang on a second, I need to block somebody. Okay, um, is it possible? Uh, sorry, could you put that in there again? I, I missed it. Um, okay, so uh, with concept, you know, every story has to have a concept. And the best thing about concept is that it's the piece that really brings that something special to your story. And then your premise is what brings the plot in. And so I'm going to talk about today premise and how um, to use concept to basically create your premise. So, um, you know, concept, the cool thing about it is that you have the same concept for, you could have the same concept for multiple stories. And so if you're writing a series, that's how concept works is you have the same concept across all of the stories and then you have different premises or plots that go with each story. And so, um, you know, just as an example, okay, let's see. Uh, I've written something, a short story kind of thing. That's awesome. Good. Keep writing. The more you write, the better. The more you practice and, you know, the easier it is. Is it possible for me to have a look? Um, well, if you want to talk to me about working together, you could definitely check out, go to this link right here jenniferblanchard.net slash clarity call and you can sign up to talk to me about your story and I'd be more than happy to give you some guidance on where you can go with it. Um, at this time, unfortunately, I don't really um, have the capacity to be able to just look at people's stories for them without them being my clients. So um, if you, right here, jenniferblanchard.net slash clarity call and, you know, um, I run a Facebook group that's free. If you want to check that out, it's called the Emerging Novelist Incubator. And there's a lot of people in there who would be interested, I'm sure, to give you feedback on your story. So you're welcome. So if you don't want to um, hire somebody to help you, that's another option as well. Okay, so going into premise. So premise is really just Emerging Novelist Incubator. Yeah, if you type in Emerging Novelist in the Facebook search bar, it will come up. Um, okay, so premise is your plot. So this is what actually goes on in your story. So this is the something happening. And a plot really, at the end of the day, you know, in the most simple terms is this. A protagonist that wants something, an antagonist that wants to oppose what the protagonist wants, and a journey that ensues because of it. Now that's, you know, very simple terms. Of course, there's a lot more that goes into um, a plot. Oh, James says the Facebook group is well worth joining. Thank you. Yes, it's an awesome group. We are super fun and we're very positive and we're all focused on just being really good storytellers and we're there to just help support each other and to just make sure that you know we have all the help we need to get our stuff out into the world so yeah we're a fun group so yeah okay so going into how concept and premise works together so concept like I said is the the piece of your story it's the landscape the setting a lot of times it's it's the stage that your story is going to unfold on and then your your plot your premise is what is actually unfolding on that stage. So kind of as an example, The Hunger Games, so this is an easy one because a lot of people have seen the movie or read the book. So The Hunger Games, the concept itself is the games. So it's the fact that, you know, these children are pitted against each other to fight to the death 
and they have to now, um, you know, come out the alive, one of them. And so that's the concept, because with that, you could really come up with a million different possible stories that could come from that same concept. And so that's what makes it different than premise. Now, premise is your plot. So each of the Hunger Games movies and books have you know, their own plots. They're not the same plot in every story, but the concept is the same. And so in the first Hunger Games, the, um, hi, Jen, how are you? Oh, thank you so much. I'm glad you like the blue. I'm liking it too. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, so with the Hunger Games, you know, the games is the concept. And then the first ver the first movie or the first book, um, the premise, the plot of the story is actually a fake love story that's going on between um, Katniss and Peeta. So they're, they've agreed to basically pretend that they're in love so that they can um, survive the games and get, you know, stay, stay alive, basically. So that is the plot of the first one. And again, the concept is the games itself. Now in Twilight, you know, the same concept goes across all the Twilight books and movies. So that concept is a vampire and a human girl fall in love. And so the funny thing is that a lot of times writers will think that that itself is the plot, but it's really not because really a girl falling in love with a vampire isn't actually a story. So it's a concept and it's a really good concept at that, but it's not a story because there has to be something else there. You know, again, to explain what a story is, you know, a protagonist that wants something, an antagonist that wants to oppose that protagonist, and a journey that ensues because of it. And so just from that definition alone, you can see that a vampire and a human girl falling in love isn't really enough to be a story. And so in the first Twilight, the premise or the plot of the story is actually these, you know, creatures, which we find out, you know, are other vampires. But in the story, they aren't sure yet. They're kind of discovering this as they go along. These creatures are um, killing people in the, you know, town of Forks and um, they're on it. The police chief, you know, Bella's dad and all of them are, are searching for this creature or whatever they think it is. They find out, you know, at the midpoint that it's human. And, um, you know, and then they, these vampires now start attacking Bella, you know, so toward the end of the story, they're after her. They're not just after, you know, anybody, but they're really specifically after her. And so that's the plot of the story. And a lot of times writers get confused and think that it's the love story. And so that's where you look for that definition. You know, is there an antagonist? Who is the antagonist? And how are they opposing what the protagonist wants? Because the story at, you know, very simple terms is a goal of some kind. So a protagonist has a goal of some kind that they want to get to. And, you know, that's how it kind of works. So, um, and then talking about the story that I was going through yesterday. So I talked a little bit about the story that I'm working on right now. And so, um, my concept at this point is, um, basically this very simple statement. So what if you got invited to go on tour with your favorite band, which included the guy that you believe to be your soulmate? That's the concept. Now that in itself is not a story. There's no antagonist, there's no goal, and there's no journey that's going to ensue really because of it. So again, that's what separates concept from premise. And so now the premise of my story is I'm bringing in an antagonist who is named Liz Sprinkman, and she's basically a groupie who is, you know, friends with this rocker that she, um, you know, has been friends with for a long time. And so my protagonist, who wants to date this rocker and, and be with him and thinks it's her soulmate, um, you know this groupie is not going to oppose her getting this guy because, you know, she wants him. And so that's the actual plot is her going up against this groupie and squaring off with her and either getting what she wants at the end or not. I'm not going to tell you what happens, but, um, you know, that's kind of the journey. So that's really the difference between concept and premise. And since I write love stories and since a lot of the people I work with write love stories, um, I am going to do a Periscope tomorrow that talks all about how to make a concept for your love story. So if you are interested in learning about that, be sure to check out my Periscope tomorrow. Um, so if anyone has questions about concept or premise, feel free to put them in the chat box now. Otherwise, I'm going to wrap this up. And I like to keep these kind of short because, you know, it takes a lot to watch a video. So... Nice and short, but if you do want to go back and watch the previous ones, because like I said, I'm doing um, a video every weekday for this whole month, and I'm going to be talking all about the different topics that you need to know to plan your story before National Novel Writing Month. So you can go to this link right here to see all the replays, catch.me slash inkybytes, and that's my Twitter handle, so um, that's how you can find me on there. But all my replays will be here, and so you can go here and you can get all the replays from this week plus all the other periscopes I've done for, you know, all the last ones I've done the last few months. 
Um, and I will be back tomorrow with another Periscope sharing all about how to make your story, um, your love story conceptual. Because, you know, a love story is not enough for a story. There has to be something else there to amp it to that new level. And that's where concept comes in. So definitely uh, check that out if you're interested. And otherwise, I will catch you next time.